chambers there, for sure one back here. Mm -hmm. I think we could for sure hang a stand here. I remember there's a cedar tree in front of the hardwood. There was a bachelor group there last year that was just all getting there. Put the phone there. Start with the home camera up here somewhere. Yeah. We didn't do any cameras on that side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Might be good to have one option over there. Well, Max and Grant and myself just got to Kentucky late last night and uh, we're here just making a quick trip to do a little prep work with the Kentucky opener just a couple weeks away. Uh, we're hoping we're going to have a little bit of a leg up this year from the standpoint of making this early trip to do some prep work, but also we're back on property we hunted last year too, so we at least have a little more knowledge going into it. Um, this isn't the only uh, permission property we have. We have a couple other options that we're going to check out as well as some public land. So our, our kind of strategy right now with a couple of weeks to go before season is to cast a wide net of cameras find some deer we want to hunt and then narrow it down from there but right now we're just trying to spread everything out across these permission properties and the public land as well as a starting point but we're starting on the property we hunted most last year and uh, with last year's knowledge we're going we're putting some cameras in some of the same spots there's a water hole and then those little coves that we hunted last year seem to be good spots uh, but from a hunting perspective, we're gonna maybe hang a couple stands, but we just learned this is, it's a lot different. It's not flatland like Iowa, where we're used to just playing wind direction. You actually have to account more for thermals here with as much terrain as there is. So uh, everything kind of falls down in this big bottom field on these calm evenings. Um, so it's a challenge for sure, but I think we have a little bit better idea of how to hunt it. Now we just got to find some deer. So that's today's project. We're going to get going, get some cameras out. Um, it's crazy to believe it's two weeks away already. Oh, no. um, I'm glad we made it down here at least uh, a little early, try to get some of this work done. Or there? destruction there <laughs> going on over there. He's after that mine scrape. Can't wait. Pictures start rolling in. Actually, I can't wait for you guys to sort through them all and send them to me. <laughs> Well, this is a pretty big property and we're trying to cover it with six or seven cutty link cameras on the same system uh, but we also have two repeaters and on a property like this they make a big difference so you're essentially doubling the distance you can have these cameras because that repeater is basically just transferring the pictures it's not acting as a camera but it's it's increasing your distance in between cameras so rather than us wasting a camera out in an area where we don't actually need one or want one we're able to just put that repeater to extend that signal to get back in these coves and stuff like that so um, just something to think about rather than you know buying another camera just to increase your range Cuddy Beck does have the repeaters as good options especially this is a perfect example of a property that that needs that nice hot day to be doing this but it's good to, to get it done I feel like it was a pretty productive day we got six cameras out mm -hmm. I think yep. two sets hung um, one in a new spot and then one where Grant was having all those encounters just a little bit different tree so potentially be there opening day depending on the, the weather conditions but uh, I do think we got a nice head start it's always better doing that than relying solely on a hanging hunt especially when it's 80 90 degrees like it usually is for that opener so we'll see the countdowns on I'm excited for the pictures to start rolling in yeah, me too. Uh, well this is we're about a, a week away from this Aaron so if we do get some pictures of some potential shooters or deer that we want to try to target down here in Kentucky uh, we'll show them now but um, like we said earlier we do have some other uh, properties that we're going to try to scout and check out this was the one we're probably most excited about just because we have a little little history here but i uh, going to go explore a couple more and also some public land so uh, be busy the next couple of days uh, but we're we're definitely counting down 
a day's left till we actually get to climb in a tree and hunt on September 3rd. Hey guys, it's the middle of August here and Justin and I are up here at our main farm. We're uh, actually on this uh, plot that we call the peninsula stand and uh, this is an area that we've hunted a lot in the past and it's probably where we're going to target our main deer this year and that's that deer we call Crab King. We've had a lot of histories and a lot of encounters with him but uh, today we just wanted to go over what works for us. We're doing uh, mainly turnips and we come into these plots a couple weeks in a, uh, beforehand and spray them and uh, get a good kill on them and then we come in here and we apply 60 pounds the acre of nitrogen and uh, then we go ahead and run the rotary tiller over it and depending on the conditions uh, here in the Midwest we've been pretty dry so as you can tell this plot behind us got pretty fine it's a, a very powdery environment so we like to roll it once and then we'll take just a regular kitchen scale and we'll weigh out each individual plot beforehand so we know that we're getting exactly three pounds to the acre applied um, it works well for us we label it we know that that's all we have to apply we top seed it on top of that rolled dirt and then we finish it off by rolling it again and uh, we have some rain here in the forecast so hopefully we do get a couple of those rains coming up and these plots will generally do really well but we're gonna go ahead and finish up here on our main farm and then I'm gonna leave it with Justin as uh, he has some exciting news, he recently purchased um, 30 acres on the north side of our main farm here. And uh, a lot of the deer that we've had history with and stuff, they seem to be coming from that area or generally migrating towards that area late season. So he's super excited about that. Um, I'm gonna let him explain to you guys everything that he's done on that farm so far, kind of the expectations that we have moving forward. But uh, we're running out of daylight here, so we're, we got quite a few plots to do. We're gonna get after it and uh, hopefully finish this up today. Well guys, me and Tyler just got up here on this brand new piece that I was able to purchase late last year. Uh, this piece borders us to the northeast and uh, we really like it a lot as in years past all we could really do was hunt the south side of the sanctuary here. Well now this is going to allow us to hunt the north and the south so we can play the winds a lot more this year. And in the meantime as I was trying to strike up a deal with the previous landowner, he was generous to let us uh, run some uh, trail cameras on it last year. And uh, it's kind of putting the pieces of the puzzle as a uh, buck we call Crab King. That's our main target this year. He was using it a lot, but we uh, kind of just engineered this whole uh, food plot around that deer as we've uh, left a half acre plot on the south end of it. As uh, you can tell here, we planted a bunch of Egyptian wheat in the main plot and beans in the center as where we typically plant corn, but the input costs are so high this year, we elected to go with the Egyptian wheat and then the beans in the center. And that's gonna allow us to get in it and out of the uh, redneck down there on that half acre plot. Uh, another thing we like about this particular piece is the timber's been TSI'd about 10 to 15 years ago, so it's nice and thick. We feel like uh, the deer are using a lot for bedding. And then something that we're gonna start doing next year is we're gonna plant a lot of uh, uh, switch grasses kind of up by the road to kind of shield it from people driving by. And then there's a one acre uh, field deep in the timber there that we're gonna uh, plant on switch grass as well. So. We're gonna get at it here. Uh, we're gonna get that quarter acre of turnips in and then we'll uh, come back and plant the uh, other last quarter uh, early September. So hopefully we catch some timely rains in the meantime.